bearings. So bearings are used to measure the relative distance or angular distance between two points. And in order to do that, we first have to understand a compass. So let's have a look. The top direction is always north. This direction is east, this one's south, and this one's west. They're all separated by 90 degree angles. So over at east, we've got 90 degrees. At south, we've got 180 degrees. At west, we've got 270 degrees. So north is zero degrees, but it's also 360 degrees. Now in bearings, we always have to use three figures to measure our bearings. So if we can't write 90 degrees, we have to write zero, nine zero degrees. In the middle of all these, we have more directions. So this one is northeast, have zero four five degrees. This one is southeast at 135 degrees. This one southwest at 225 degrees. And this one's northwest at 315 degrees. Because each one of these is split exactly in half at the 45 degree angle. So this should hopefully help us when we solve some bearings problems. Now remember, a bearing is a way to measure two points. So let's have a look at a diagram. Let's look at point A here and point B here. Now, whenever we have bearings, it's really useful to draw a compass where the center is at the point. So let's do that. Where north is upwards, and let's draw another one where north is upwards. Let's draw a line connecting the two points. If we knew this angle is 30 degrees, how can we find the bearing of B from A? Now, it's really important where we're measuring from. If we're measuring from A, we have to be measuring from A. If it was from B, we'd have to be measuring from B. Now, when we measure a bearing, we always have to start at north and move in a clockwise direction until we get to the line that joins the two points. So we start at north, and we measure in a clockwise direction until we get to the line that joins the two points. And that angle is the bearing. We know this angle is 90, and our bearing of B from A just becomes 90 plus 30, which is going to be 120. And it's three figures, so we don't have to add any zeros before. What about the bearing of A from B? Can we work that out? Well, we can use the fact that the east-west line here is parallel to the east-west line here, and the north-south line is also parallel to this north-south line. So if this line is parallel, this line becomes a transversal. And we know that this angle is going to be alternate to this one here. So we know that angle in there is also 30 degrees. So when we measure the bearing of A from B, we have to be measuring at B, start at the north line, go in a clockwise direction until we get to the line that joins the two points and we need that entire angle. So we know that's 90, 90 and 90. So we're already at 270 over here. We just need another 30. So 270 plus 30 is gonna be a bearing of 300 degrees of A from B. Let's look at an example. 
So if we travel three kilometers on a bearing of zero six zero degrees from A to B, how far east did we travel? So the first thing is to draw a diagram. So let's start with our point A and let's draw a compass going right through A where this is north. If we're traveling on a bearing of 60 degrees, remember we have to measure from north clockwise until we get to 60 degrees. So about that is going to be 60 degrees. And we're traveling for three kilometers. So this would be point B. East is in this direction, and we want to know how far east did we travel. So when we want to find how far east we've traveled, we want to know the horizontal distance towards east. Let's just make a right angle triangle here. If this is 60 degrees, this angle here would be 30 degrees. Because we know in between north and east makes 90 degrees in total. So we want to know how far east did we travel, so let's call this x, because that's the distance we want to find, the easterly direction. And now we can just use some right angled trigonometry to find this distance using this triangle. So let's label the sides we're interested in. We've got our hypotenuse opposite the right angle and our adjacent side. So the trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse is cos. So we've got cos of our angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Put in everything we know. We know the angle's 30 equals our adjacent side, which is x, over our hypotenuse, which is 3. Multiply both sides by 3 to get x by itself. So x equals 3 cos 30. And that's going to be 2.6 to 1 decimal place, 2.6 kilometers to 1 decimal place. Now, so we know the bearing of B from A, but what is the bearing of A from B? So in order to do that, we need to draw a compass going through B. We've got our north line. And we need the angle starting from north, going in a clockwise direction until we get to the line that joins both points. Or well, using alternate angles, if this is 60, this has to be 60 as well. We know this is 180, so our bearing is going to be 180 plus 60, and we get 240 degrees.